Hey everybody, here I am, just running around the observation deck of my roller coaster. Easy the Tiger has remodeled it for me. He had a really great idea, and uh, I'm kind of putting some personal touches on it. This glass that I'm standing on, he had used a translucent uh, green, and I've decided to change it to clear, because I feel that when you look down through it, uh, clear kind of gives you the uh, a queasiness that you might not get looking through uh, green glass. So I'm going to go down and uh, break the glass that I want to change and then replace it. I think that I had mentioned to Izzy that uh, I wasn't too happy about the observation deck of the of the roller coaster. It wasn't that uh, good of a setup, and so he came up with uh, this observ this uh, what would you call this this overhang. And I've been I've been in the top of skyscrapers that had an observation overhang that you could step out onto and see the city streets below. And an overhang definitely does give you uh, a queasiness in your stomach, uh, butterflies. That's the effect that I'm trying to capture here. Now, we are at the top of the tallest building in Patronville. I'm not sure how many blocks high. It's somewhere around 100, I think. Maybe 100 to 110. Other than this building, uh, buildings within the city limit have a, uh, they're zoned to have a max height of 80 blocks. You ever see these old black and white photographs of the construction workers from the 30s and the 40s. They would be up 60, 70 stories, standing on a just a, a steel beam, uh, a girder. You know, just the skeleton of a building. In they wouldn't have any kind of safety equipment whatsoever. A lot of times you, you'd see a photograph of three or four of them sitting high above the world on just a, a six inch wide steel beam, drinking their coffee, eating a sandwich. No safety equipment, no, you know, no, no safety harness that could keep them from falling to their death. 
and quite a few of them did fall to their death. It was a very dangerous job. Especially when you had uh, you had one guy that was usually maybe a floor below heating up rivets in a little a little furnace, making them you know red hot, and then he would take some tongs and grab the red hot rivet and sling it up up to a a guy that was usually hanging on the end of a a beam with a little metal funnel, a little some little cup type deal. And he would catch the red hot rivet and then he would place it in the hole and some guys with hammers or uh, in wrenches and stuff, they would beat it and in the submission you know rivets held together all of that uh, structure and you know you can get queasy just standing at the top of a minecraft building looking down you definitely do not want to fall oh just like I am Fortunately, I can fly, and I can take myself back up, and set myself back down, and continue on, business as usual. Uh, your construction worker of decades ago, or even today, it's still, it's still dangerous. I'm pretty sure they use uh, safety harnesses and things like that these days. If you are uh, in the business of erecting skyscrapers, you can tell us in the comments what kind of safety equipment that you use. Uh, if you know someone that works in this dangerous profession, maybe you can... You can ask them about it. But it is dangerous. Now, I'm out here risking my life just so the people that visit my roller coaster can stand out here and feel their, their lunch heave around inside of their stomach as they look down upon the city streets. That's a good view of the ballpark down there, even though it's just half of the park. Uh, I wonder if I had a better computer with a better uh, graphics card. If it would change the way Minecraft works, if I would be able, be able to see longer distances the way it is now, you can only see so far in the, the computer doesn't draw what's beyond a certain point. It will, obviously, eventually draw it if you get close enough to it. Well, green is my favorite color, so I, I am going to put this, uh, this green glass safety barrier. I don't want anyone falling. I cannot risk a lawsuit.
Now, this city of Patronville is, uh, it's a young, up-and-coming city, and uh, its financial coffers are just not uh, as fat as we would like them to be. So we continually, continually have new projects that pretty much keep us tapped out. Actually, we we do fairly well considering uh, the businesses here in Patronville. Uh, do not pay any taxes. <laughs> I don't know. It's like pulling a rabbit out of a hat. Now, I do think this looks really good. And uh, my hat is off to Izzy for this, uh, this idea of this overhang. See the moon up there. If you are a citizen of Patronville and you have not ridden the roller coaster, I I encourage you to do so. It is quite the wild ride. Now I'm standing on the edge of this glass, and I'm going to try to walk it ever so carefully. Steady, steady. Yeah. I like to live dangerously sometimes. Now, I'm using a mouse, and uh, I've been catching a lot of flack for using the trackpad on the laptop. So I've been trying to use a mouse uh, more often, and I'm still getting used to it. Boy, it's getting bright out quick. The sun is really blazing down on me right now. Yeah, let's see. We're going to kind of fly. Yeah, we're, we are in creative. So we're going to fly over to this, this part of the city. I want to check on some recent construction. So there's, there's been a flurry. Yeah. That's a good word, a flurry of construction in the city. And we'll take a look at that here shortly, but that's one last look at the at the observation tower. Looks good.
Not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. So I'm just going to take this uh, this moment just to kind of fly around a little bit. You can see the ball field and the airship on the left of that. And we're kind of descending right now toward uh, that's Lighthouse Park. It's a community community park. It's very nice. It has a fountain. And some benches, and there's a lighthouse that you can go up into. And then over here is the community cemetery, Patronville Cemetery, with all its mausoleums and its graves. And uh, there's some spooky stuff in the mausoleums for sure. And here's a community swimming pool. And uh, I've actually dove in before and swam some laps there's a lifeguard and there's the original location of the drunken sheep pub and grill here's an electronic billboard but I I don't know if it's working these these things are very sophisticated and, uh, inside uh, down there is the circuitry. It's very sophisticated. But when they are working, they're amazing. Yes, that is a Star Wars X-Wing fighter chasing after a couple of uh, uh, Darth Vader's, uh, what are they, uh, TIE fighters, I think. And next to that is the, the big ship, I forget what it's called, uh. Uh, a star destroyer or something like that it's it's huge I mean it cast a huge shadow on the water surface below it and this video does not do justice to the actual size of this thing My computer can't even draw the whole thing because it's so mammoth. And we're going to be touring this uh, Star Destroyer in an upcoming video. I'm not exactly sure when. You know, contrary to popular belief, I I live a I live a pretty busy life. You know, someone in the comments recently said I don't remember their exact wording. Like uh, they were glad I'm back, and could I explain my absence or lack of activity or something like that? I wasn't sure what they were talking about because, I mean, we're just barely into February, and between my two channels, I think I've, I think I've uploaded, I don't know, eight videos. You know, that's, you know, that's that's pretty good, I think, and it's very difficult to do that and still. Is it? That thing's on fire. 
those guns got that. But yeah, the videos I have uploaded, it's, it takes a lot of work to do this, so I'm not upset by the comment or anything, but uh, in, in a perfect world, I would release one video per week. Now this rocket engine nozzle, let me show you how large this is. I'm going to just plop down on it to give you an idea. This is just that nozzle. This should give you an idea of just how large this, this ship is. That's mammoth. I just hope that we can find our way around inside once once we end up going into it. I mean, look at that. Look at this. Look how large that is. You remember where I was standing back there? One of the citizens of Patronville, uh, we call him Vinny. Uh, I think his username is Mini something or another. He owns the VAV, V A V, the VAV apartment building down in the city. And uh, I believe he built this. So we're just going to run, run this way. But uh, to finish my thought on my uh, video uploading schedule, I don't really have a schedule. I just do this as I can, as I can fit it in because... Uh, I, you know, I can't let this be ever consuming. Uh, after all, I am a, a husband and a father, a grandfather, a brother. So, you know, I have to, I have to uh, work those roles in my life. And it's hard to be a full-time Oops, I wasn't paying attention. Flew right into that. I was trying to give you a dramatic shot of flying up and over the wall of the ballpark. Let's try it again. There we go. So, if there's something in your life that you're obsessive about to the point where you neglect the people around you. I can only tell you, boy, what a shot that is. I can only tell you what a what a mistake you're making. Do not neglect those around you. I like that shot. I want to show you a, a unique building. Yep, that's it, the one that has eyes. Yeah, I said that. The building has eyes and eyebrows and a mustache. <laughs> And is quite quite unique. I don't think that he got the memo about making your your city buildings uh, realistic looking, but 
it's it's so crazy that I just kind of looked the other way because I liked it so much. On the top of this church, it looks it doesn't look the same. Now, over there's a hospital in a a business building. And there's my roller coaster. To the left is the bank. Now, we've we've toured the bank. Uh, we've toured the hospital, I'm pretty sure. Now, this red brick building is the Vav Apartments, and somebody got murdered inside of this. Uh, let's peek in some windows, and maybe we can see which uh, unit uh, this gruesome deed happened in. And uh, let me just keep on... Oh, I think that's it. I see blood all over the floors. Yep, there's bodies and blood. It was a terrible thing. Uh, here's some window washers on my left. Uh, for some reason, this window happens to be open right where they are working. That's, that's kind of questionable as why that is. Yeah, this was terrible. Yeah, we read about this in the papers. It was terrible. Yeah, the police, the Patronville police had it all uh, taped off. and You would think that they would have came back and kind of cleaned up the mess instead of just leaving it all around. You think the next of kin would have loved to have the bodies back, but oh well. Apprentice Maurice something. What is what is going on in what is this place? Maurice is a he's an apprentice, but f for what? All these anvils. Uh, I get a pretty creepy vibe from this apartment. Off limits the, the murder unit. Yeah, Vav Apartments has really, really gone downhill. There used to be a lot of tenants, but they've been moving out left and right. Uh, Vinny, if if you are watching this video, tell us in the comments what's going on. Why are people leaving your building? Is it, is it because you're not taking care of it? Is it kind of a it's kind of an old building, and uh, all these empty units? And uh, we don't want the the viewers of this video to think that. Let's let's go to the very top that. You're some kind of a slum lord, or anything like that. Now, this is a pretty tall building, so you can see that we're up pretty high just by... You can just tell by looking at the tops of the other buildings. But Vinny, I, th I think that you could modernize this building and really pull the tenants back in. Because the competition down there is, it's it's not too bad in Patronville yet. Uh, there's a, a nice little, you can see the right below us the the white rooftop of the hotel. And that yellow building is Izzy the Tigers. I think that he was going to turn that into luxury apartments. Uh, I'm not sure where he is on that project. That you know that yellow building right there. What's this? this? Some kind of ladder. Why is there a ladder here? Well, let's go in. Nice carpet. And this is definitely someone... Someone lives in this one. 
a bedroom. I mean, they like the red and the black uh, motif there, don't they? Whole kitchen area, sofas. Uh, there's a map that shows that Star Destroyer. Yes, this must be Vinny's apartment, uh, the owner of this building. Yeah. Rest in peace, Henry McDougal Handel. I don't see Henry's picture there, but there's a nice plaque. Maybe Vinny is okay with people not living here. Well, the pink. This was pink was actually our first citizen of the realm. Yeah, she rolled the dice and took a chance. Yeah. Well, there's her bathtub. Boy, that looks inviting for some reason. Uh, I don't see anyone in here, so, uh, yeah. Maybe I'll just kind of dip a toe in there. Oh, that's nice. She would be pretty creeped out right now if she saw me in her bathtub. <laughs> I better, I better skedaddle and get out of here. Uh, Pink, if you see this video, go ahead and drain that water and scrub your tub. There's a, a place, uh, a vanity, and a, there's the bed. A little bit of a uh, tray ceiling there. And she has a very nice home here in Patronville. But she also maintains an apartment here for some some reason, I'm not sure why. So let's go in backwards. That'll make it easier to get off the elevator. Oh, we've already been on this floor. Let's go down another. Max will feel good. That's empty there, no. Please knock. Max, Max will feel good as a basically. Well, he raise he uh, raises. So he's kind of doing this on the sly. I think everyone is aware. Every, all the citizens of Patronville are aware of this guy. So he runs a pretty sketchy operation here. I wonder if Vinny, Vinny, do you know that you have uh, this person? You know, everyone may know it, but Vinny, I don't know. There's an empty unit. And there's Izzy the Tiger. So yeah, he had a unit here. Uh, let's see what he's got going. Well, he's moved out. He had a place here, but uh, Vinny, are you, are you raising your rents? Uh, what's going on here? Why has everyone left? Uh, I say everyone. Well, obviously everyone hasn't. I mean... Uh, Maxwell Feelgood hasn't, and Pink still has a place here. Man, just empty units after empty units. And this building is, it just looks old. Just the yellow floors. And, 
you know, the, the stone walls. It is an old building, there's no doubt, and it has a lot of charm. A lot of charm because of that. Now there's a bed in a wardrobe. I don't see anything in there, but nice view of the ballpark. BH, this one's empty, but this one over here says BH Jazz. That's the banker. He's the richest guy in Patronville. He owns the he owns the baseball team. Boy, look at that bed. Now, why does the richest man in Patronville maintain an apartment in this section of town? in this uh, in this building uh, no offense Vinny <laughs> look at that TV wow but yeah you can you can draw your own conclusions as to why he keeps a, an apartment over here Slowly descend to this level. There's no sign there. Here's the laundry mat. Let's step in. And washers and dryers and tables to fold your clothes. It's just an empty room full of cobwebs. I, I doubt if Vinny has a maintenance uh, staff anymore. Quite honestly, I'm not sure if anyone works here. I imagine he had uh, custodians uh, at one point. I know he had a security guard down in the lobby. Here's the lobby. Here's a uh, Mailboxes. That should be up. This one should be up. Women. Women. I guess that means women. Restroom. Uh, the security guard isn't there. He probably lost his job. Here's the men's restroom. There's a pumpkin left over from our jack-o'-lantern Halloween hunt. Let's get rid of that. Yeah. Maybe these are all the... A lot of people used to have apartments here that no longer do. Now, there's a luxury uh, hotel right there. Now, in my last video, you saw me making a new house. Here is uh, what I've come up with. It's not finished. I'm not going to tour, take you for a tour yet. We're just going to... But that's kind of what I was looking for. It's much larger. It's four bedrooms. A formal dining room, sitting room, a library. It's very nice. I don't have all the furniture in it yet. And when I do, when it's finished, I'll, I'll take you for a tour. I liked my old house. It was just too small. And 
when I built this one, I had to get rid of the, the driveway and I had to get rid of my car. That was a gift uh, to me. I hated to get rid of the car, but here's the back of the building. Let's run around the side here. And, uh, I do have some furniture in it, but it's not complete yet. There's the front. It's reminiscent of a New York City uh, townhouse. Not quite, but that's that was the vibe that I was going after. I thought that would fit better uh, in this downtown area that I that I live in. Uh, I, I quite like it. Let's go over here and land on the the roof. There's a Pro Air Temp Master Two. Yeah, I've got three of these, and these these things cost me a fortune to have these installed. But they they heat and they cool and keep everything nice and pleasant inside. There's the vines that go downstairs. I had a bubble fader, but uh, bubble faders are kind of, I don't know. I like the vine better. I saw the vine in a couple other buildings, and I thought I would try it, and I do like it. There's some new home construction over here. It's actually quite, quite nice. Now this citizen that built this is a fairly new, and he's got his house at the corner of uh, Akita Street in 7th. Eventually, uh, we'll take a tour of this uh, but we're going to give him time to make sure it's finished. And Nacho Vesper's house. Nacho Vesper. Very nice. Can't wait to see the inside of it. Yeah. There's a nice fountain. There's a nice house on my right. Uh, this one belongs to Mason. He's the owner of the Rough Diamonds, uh, Patronville Rough Diamonds hockey team. He's, he's uh, pretty successful. Now, there's stuff down there. I don't know if I've re shown you that before, but this is the Baztec Pond in uh, Gazebo. Baztec is a defunct company here in Patronville. They actually started building a mammoth high-rise. Uh, in, the, in the last video, I was talking about the pit. Here's resident of DJ. Resident of DJ. What does that mean? Resident of DJ. But yeah, they, they started they started building boy that is nice. They started building their, their building and they went belly up. They went into bankruptcy and now there's just a big pit. In in my last video I think I mentioned parks and recreation about the pit. Yeah, we've got a pit too. North Lake Drive.
Yeah, this is a nice building. This is Greystone Publishing Company. Very nice. I think I toured this one in a video. Uh, Cordell is the owner of this. Uh, he's currently out of the country. Uh, uh, hope to see him him back in the future. There's a very nice uh, skyscraper going up. Actually, uh, Jim's pop, uh, he had to move away. He, he's no longer living here in Patronville. So the fate of this building will be, it's going to be in the hands of the city council. Uh, the city may have to uh, lay claim to this. There's a basketball court in there, and then the higher you go, you see it's just unfinished. So the city may have to lay claim to this building and uh, use it for whatever the city sees fit to use it for. Someone said we should make a, uh, a school in Patronville, a uh, university, I think. Uh, that's a good suggestion uh, to the uh, commenter, the viewer, that you know who you are. But uh, and Jonathan is uh, putting up a, a building. It looks like it's going to be a nice one. Uh, I'll be glad when he uh, is able to get that finished up. Uh, this building is... It's uh, not going anywhere. There's, uh, is this the one? Let's see. Is this the one we just looked at that had the basketball court on the second floor? Maybe so. Now here's the one that Bass Tech started, and then they went out of business, and uh, they fled. You know, they fled the city. They left town. This project never finished. Company went bankrupt. So they've got a nice basement started, and that's about it. It's all fenced off so that some, some, you know, so that kids can't uh, play in there and, you know, get hurt. But the city is definitely going to do something with that site. Not sure what. So, um, Mr. City Councilman uh, Izzy and all the rest of the officers of the city, you can you can start brainstorming, come up with some ideas. You know. And then we'll see what we can do with all that real estate. So we're going to wrap up this this video. It's, uh, it's a pretty nice night out there. And I uh, need to wrap it up. And... Uh, why I like the roof of my, my house. I've got a lot of room up here. I'll put some furniture up here, some a barbecue grill and whatnot. But I hope you like this video and I'll see you on the next installment. So take care.